Right in this lecture, we're going to start chapter 10, covering the first couple sections on rotation. Okay, so we're going to first look at what the rotational variables are. Um, I mean, we first need to define a couple vocabulary terms. So a rigid body is a body that can be that can rotate with all its parts locked together and without any change in its shape. Um, a fixed axis means that the rotation occurs about an axis that does not move. Right. So to, to simplify things, we're going to assume that our objects that are rotating are rigid, which means they're not moving around in any way as they're rotating around, and then it's going to be about some fixed axis um, that is not moving. Okay. All right, so just kind of got to get an idea of, of, of what type of an object could be or how it's rotating. Um, so a rigid body of arbitrary shape, as shown here by this uh, kind of egg shape thing, in pure rotation about the z-axis of a coordinate system. All right, so the z-axis is the one that's coming out of the page. X and Y are, are down here. So the z-axis would, or not out of the page, but straight up uh, on the page as shown here. Okay, so it's going to be rotating around this. Um, the position of the reference line with respect to the rigid body is arbitrary, but it's perpendicular to the rotation axis. All right, so if, if here's our rotation axis and this is our reference line, this line is what is going to be swinging out around here. So it's going to go from here to here to here, kind of around the circle as we go around like that. Right, and this uh, arrow here shows you the direction of rotation. Um, it is fixed in the body and rotates with the body, right? So this reference line is fixed in the body. It's going to rotate around with, with the body as, as the body rotates. Okay. Um, so let's look at angular position uh, first. All right, so we take our same object, but now we're looking at like a top-down view. All right, so we're taking uh, this object here, but now we're looking at it straight down from the top, like straight down like this. Okay, so what, when we're doing that, we can see that it's rotating about this z-axis here that is coming straight out of the page. So in this case, if you think of a line that's coming straight at you from this point um, out of the page, and then it, it's rotating its reference line around like so. So it's rotating it around in the x and the y direction, uh, around like that. Now the body uh, has rotated counterclockwise by the angle of theta, and this is going to be the positive direction. All right, so we're going to say that um, when you're going counterclockwise, like in this direction, that is going to be positive. Now if you were to go around in this direction, this would be negative. All right, so here S is going to be the length of a circular arc that extends from the x-axis. Um, so our equation is going to be theta is equal to S over R, where theta is going to be the measurement of the angle, and this can be in either degrees or in radians. Very often we're going to use radians in this class. All right, that's going to be equal to S, which is your arc length, right? It's the it's the distance traveled right here. And um, and then R is going to be your radius, right? Which is the measurement from the center of the rotation axis all the way to the arc length. All right, that's going to be your radius R. Okay, uh, so again, the angle is defined in this way. It's going to be measured in radians. So if you have an arc length divided by a a radius, right, this is really just meters divided by meters, right, you get sort of a unitless value, which we're going to call radians. Right. Okay, so we also um, should relate this to degrees, just so we have a, a way of going back and forth between them. All right, so let's first talk about one Rev. So REV is going to be one revolution, which means one entire trip around the circles, right? So if the object made one full rotation, it's going to be one revolution. And we, of course, know that this is 360 degrees all the way around the circle, right? This is going to be equal to 2 pi r divided by r. So our arc length is 2 pi r, right, which is the circumference of a circle. And we divide that by r from the equation up here. We see that this is just simply going to be 2 pi radians. So one revolution is 2 pi radians. Now one radian is going to be approximately 
three degrees. Since we know that there's two pi radians in a full circle, we look at just one radian, <clears throat> divide that out, we have 57.3 degrees per radian. And if we look at that in revolutions, it's about one point, or excuse me, um, 0 0.159 revs, right, revolutions. Okay. All right, so if a body rotates about the rotation axis, as in changing the angular position of the reference line from theta 1 to theta 2, the body undergoes an angular displacement of delta theta given by this. All right, so if we have, now this is the current position of the reference line, and it's rotated about some angle theta. So we're going from theta 1 to theta 2. Right. The change in displacement, or the angular displacement, is just going to be the change in your theta, so that's uh, theta 2 minus theta 1, right? The final position minus the initial position. An angular displacement in the counterclockwise direction is positive, and one in the counterclockwise is negative, right? So we said that before in the last slide. Okay. So suppose that our rotating body is at an angular position theta 1 at time t1, and at an angular position theta 2 at time t2, then the average angular velocity of the body in some time interval t um, from t1 to t2 is going to be, so our average, and we're going to use omega uh, for our angular velocity. All right, so again, this is omega, it's a lowercase omega, and it's, oops, it's angular velocity. All right, so our average angular velocity between some time period is going to be, of course, theta 1 minus theta 2 divided by t2 minus t1, right, which is simply our change in theta divided by our change in time, right? Our change in angular distance divided by our change in time. So this should look pretty familiar. Later on in the chapter, we're going to relate this to our linear terms. All right, so the instantaneous angular velocity, omega, is going to be the limit of the ratio as t approaches zero. All right, so we take this and we take it to the as the limit, or take the limit of it as as t approaches zero. All right, so our omega instantaneous angular velocity is going to be the limit uh, as delta t approaches zero of delta theta divided by delta t. So that of course is going to give us a derivative, right? So this is really the change in theta over the change in time, right, the instantaneous uh, angular speed. Okay. All right, so now let's look at angular acceleration. So if the angular velocity of a rotating body is not constant, then the body has some angular acceleration. If omega uh, 2 and 1 be, excuse me, if omega 2 and omega 1 be its angular velocities at some, some time t2 and t1, respectively, then the average angular acceleration of the rotating body um, from this interval is going to be defined as, sorry, so we're going to use alpha, oops, alpha that looks kind of like a fish, is going to be our angular acceleration. Right, so our average alpha is going to be w2, or I'm sorry, omega2 minus omega1 divided by t2 minus t1. All right, so this is our delta omega divided by our delta t. Now the instantaneous angular uh, acceleration alpha is the limit of this, of course. So the same thing as before, we're going to take so alpha to be the limit as, me, oops, the limit as delta t approaches zero of delta omega divided by delta t is equal to d omega dt, All right, again, which is the change in angular, um, <clears throat> the angular speed uh, divided by the change in time. All right, so these relations hold for every particle um, of that body since it's, used, it's moving as a rigid body, and the unit for angular acceleration is going to be radians a second squared. Okay, and of course, the unit for omega is radians a second. Just omega. There's going to be ratings in a second. Okay. So let's go ahead and do some example problems. All right. So the disk in the figure is rotating about its central axis like a merry-go-round. The angular position theta is given, uh, or excuse me, of a reference line on the disk is given by this equation. 
All right, so here's our disk. Here's our reference line. It's rotating around um, as such, or it could, could be rotating either way. We don't know, know for sure yet, depending on the time possibly. Um, so we want to graph the angular position of the disk versus time from t is equal to negative 3 seconds to t is equal to 5.4 seconds. Sketch the disk and its angular position reference line at t is equal to negative 2, 0, and 4, and then when, uh, excuse me, when, the, when the curve crosses the t-axis. Okay. <clears throat> so to sketch the disk and its reference line at a particular time, we need to determine what theta is for that time. We need to know what the position is. All right, so to do this, we substitute into our previous equation. We can start with negative 2. All right, so we take this equation and we plug in. So theta is going to be negative... 1.00 minus 0 0.600 times t, which is negative 2.0 seconds, plus 0 point, 0 0 0.250 oops, times t squared. So this is going to be negative 2.0 squared. All right, and we find that our theta is equal to 1.2 radians. Now, if we wanted to get that into degrees, of course, we could take 1.2 radians times 360 degrees divided by 2 pi radians, and that will convert it into, into degrees for us. So we have 96 degrees. Okay, so at time uh, t is equal to negative 2 seconds, the position is going to be 69 degrees. Okay, so this means um, that the reference line on the disk is rotated counterclockwise from the zero position by 69 degrees counterclockwise um, because theta is, is positive in this case. So sketch one uh, in the figure shows this position of the reference line. Okay, so here we can see that at negative 2 we have a positive uh, 69 degrees or 1.2 radians here. Now, similarly, for t is equal to 0, we can find theta um, is equal to negative 1, which is negative 57 radians. All right, so for t is equal to 0, you can plug 0 into this equation. Of course, that's just going to be negative 1. All right, so uh, when we have t is equal to 0, it's going to be negative 1. So we have this point right here, right? Okay. Since we got a negative value for this, uh, for this negative 57 degrees, we know that the um, position of the disk is going to be clockwise from the x-axis, right? Because we said, just to remind ourselves, if this is our disk, this direction is going to be positive, this direction is negative. So we get a negative, our, our angle is going to be somewhere like that, right? So that's how what we drew here in the picture. Now for t is equal to 4 seconds, we find, so you just take t is equal to 4, plug into this equation, you get theta is equal to 0.6 um, radians, which is 34 degrees, and that is going to be shown in this picture here. So drawing sketches for when the curves cross the t axis is then going to be easy, because theta is equal to 0, and the reference line is momentarily aligned with the zero angular position, right? So when it crosses the axis, of course, theta is equal to 0, so you get these two points here. All right, so continuing on with the same example, at what time t minimum does theta t reach the minimum value uh, shown in the figure, and what is that minimum value? Okay, well, to find the minimum of a function, we take its derivative and set that equal to zero. All right, so that's what we're going to do here. So we, we know that our, right, we're taking this function up here, which is negative 1.00 minus 0 0.600t plus 0 0.250t squared. All right, we'll take the derivative of this. So d theta dt, which we also know, of course, is omega, is equal to, ends up being equal to negative 0.600t excuse me, it's not going to be the t, right, because we took the derivative of that, so no t there, plus 0 0.500 t. All right, we take the derivative of this, we pull the 2 out front, and we subtract the exponent by 1. 
Okay. So we set this equation here equal to zero and solve for t. So when we solve for t, we get 1.20 seconds. All right, so we're going to have a minimum at 1.20 seconds. Now we want to find what the position of the minimum is. All right, so we know what the time is, we need to know what the position is. So of course we can just take this time, plug it back into our original equation, and that'll give us what the position is. All right, so theta is going to be equal to negative 1.00 minus 0 0.600 times t, which is 1.2 seconds, plus 0 0.250 t squared. And we see that our theta is equal to negative 1.36 radians, which is approximately 77.9 degrees. Okay, so that's when our theta reaches its minimum value, right? And we can go back to here. That's going to be somewhere around this point right here, right around 1.2 seconds. Okay. So continuing on with the same example, it's asking us to graph the angular velocity omega of the disk versus time from t is equal to negative 3 to t is equal to 6 seconds. Sketch the disk and indicate the direction of the turning um, of turning and the sine of omega at t is equal to negative 4, 4, and t minimum. All right, so to sketch the disk at t is equal to negative 2, we first substitute the value into our omega equation, right? So we, we found what our qu equation was for omega. That was in the last problem when we took the derivative. All right, so our omega is d theta dt is equal to negative 0 0.600 plus 0 0.500t. All right, so we're going to um, plug negative 2 into that equation, and we'll find that omega is equal to negative 1.6 radians a second. All right, so at negative 2, the disk is spinning at negative 1.6 radians a second. The minus sign here tells us that at negative 2 seconds, the disk is turning clockwise, um, right, because we said counterclockwise is positive. So if we have a negative uh, angular speed, it's going to be rotating clock, uh, clockwise. All right, so substituting in 4 seconds into this equation, we get 1.4 uh, radians a second. So now we know at some later time, at, at time t is equal to 4 seconds, it's actually going to be rotating clockwise. So we can draw, draw that here. right? At negative 2, it's spinning this way. Positive 4, it's going to be spinning in the positive, in the, uh, positive direction. Okay. Um, so the, again, the implied sign tells us that it's turning in the clock, counterclockwise direction. So for t minimum, we already know that d theta dt is equal to 0. So we must also have omega is equal to zero, right? So that is, the disk momentarily stops when the reference line reaches the minimum value of theta, as suggested by the center sketch, right? So there's no spin at some time uh, at <clears throat> when omega is equal to zero, right? And we found that that was time t is equal to 1.2 seconds. Um, so on the graph, this momentarily stop is a zero point where the plot changes from the negative clockwise motion to the positive clockwise motion. So that's going to happen right there in our plot. Okay, so lastly, let's use these results in the previous parts to describe the motion of the disk from t is equal to negative 3 to 6 seconds. All right, so when we first observe the disk at t is equal to negative 3 seconds, it ha has a positive angular position and is turning clockwise but slowly stops. Right. It then stops at an angular position of theta is equal to negative 1.3 radians, and then begins to turn counterclockwise because its angular position eventually became becoming positive again. Okay, so let's move on to another example. All right, so a child's uh, top is spun with an angular velocity given by this equation, or excuse me, angular acceleration. All right, so this is alpha is equal to 5t cubed minus 4t. With t's in seconds, alpha is going to be in radians per second squared. 
So at t is equal to zero, the top has an angular velocity of five radians a second, and a reference line on it is at an angular position of theta is equal to two radians. So they give us some, um, some conditions, they give us some more information, and we'll need that information going forward. All right, so attain an expression for the angular velocity, which is omega t, of the top. That is, find an expression that explicitly indicates how the angular velocity depends on time. Now we can tell that there is such a dependence because the top is undergoing an angular acceleration, which means that its angular velocity is going to be changing. Okay, so the angular velocity is certainly going to depend on time. All right, so let's start with this. We know that d omega dt is equal to alpha, and we're given this alpha equation. So if I rearrange this, so that it's d omega on one side and alpha dt on the other. I just multiply dt to both sides. I can then take the integral of this and find out what omega is by itself. So the integral of d omega, of course, is going to be omega. So omega is equal to the integral of d omega times the integral of alpha dt. Okay, now I can go ahead and put in our equation for alpha. And so omega is going to be the integral of our alpha equation, which is 5t cubed minus 4t dt. And the integral of this, uh, we can take the integral of each term and then add a constant. Right, so we take the integral of the first term, it's going to be t to the fourth, and we divide by 4. So this is just going to be 5 over 4, t to the fourth, minus 4t, and then we take t, increase the exponent by 1, and then divide by that exponent. So it's t squared divided by 2, and then plus some constant c. All right, so we need to figure out what this constant c is. Um, because that will give us the full equation. We can't just leave this constant there. So to do that, we use what they gave us initially. We know that um, at t is equal to zero, the angular velocity should be five radians a second. All right, so we can use that information to find what c is. All right, so when we do that, we say that five radians a second, we're just plugging it into this equation here now. So t is equal to zero. So this term is going to be zero. This term is going to be 0, so you get 0 minus 0 plus our constant. Therefore, our constant must be 5. Right? So now our full equation is then going to be omega is equal to 5 over 4, t to the fourth, minus 2t squared plus 5. Okay, so there's our equation for the angular, uh, the angular speed. All right, so that part B asks, obtain an expression for the angular position, theta t, um, of the top. All right, so again, we need to do another integral, right? We know that d theta dt is equal to omega. So we can do the same thing. We can say d theta, multiply dt to both sides. You get omega dt, which means that theta is going to be the integral of d theta which is equal to the integral of the equation that we found for omega, right? which is what we found in the previous problem. So that's 5 over 4, t to the fourth, minus 2t squared plus 5 dt. Oops. OK, so the same thing is going to happen. We take the integral of each term. So this is going to be t to the fifth divided by 5. So these 5s are going to cancel out. Oops, so this is going to be 1 over 4, t to the fifth, minus, increase the exponent by 1, so this is t to the third, and divide by 3, so this is going to be minus 2 thirds, t cubed, plus 5, increase the exponent by 1, so that's going from a 0 to a 1, so this is just going to be 5t, and we divide by 1, of course, that's not going to do anything, and then we add a constant, which I'm going to call c prime, all right, just so we don't confuse it with the previous c, it's going to be a different constant this time. All right, so again, we go back to what the information they gave us in the problem. At t is equal to 0, we can see that theta should equal 2 radians. All right, so we can set this equation, our theta should be 2, if t is equal to 0. All right, so this term is going to be 0, this term will be 0, this term will be 0. We can see this is going to be 0 minus 0 plus 0. 
plus c prime. So c prime should be equal to 2. All right, so now we just plug this into our full equation. So we have 1 over 4 t to the fifth minus 2 thirds t cubed plus 5t plus 2. All right, and there's our equation for theta. All right, that's it for this lecture. We'll pick it up next time.